All right, next up, I'd like to introduce Akinyele Thompson. Akinyele is a lifelong learner who's always trying to learn something new and find ways to improve. He's always trying to find more optimal ways to do tasks, whether that's in a code base, a product, or a feature that he's building. He believes in writing quality code, researching the best solutions for the task, creating stable architectures, optimizing for best performance, and understanding when the best time is to address technical debt. Outside of work, Akinyele enjoys traveling, large bodies of water, and going for a jog to clear his head. After a long, productive day, you can always find him spending time with his family and friends, playing games, or just chilling out, watching TV. Akinyele, floor is yours. Hey, thank you for that introduction, uh, Andrew. Um, so today, what I want to be going over for you today, guys, is essentially Zod. Um, and what Zod is, it's a TypeScript first and schema validation library. Um, Now, um, when I say TypeScript first and schema validation library, that's essentially what defines Zod. Um, how Zod sets itself apart from other um, validation library essentially is that TypeScript first schema validation library that it does. Essentially, Zod takes your validation library and that becomes your type inferencing. And you can use your validation libraries and create complex data types from your atomic data types. So essentially, your validations become your your types and your schemas. Um, so for this presentation, what I want to do is just to kind of go over the basic features of Zod and how it sets itself apart from its competitors like Yup and Joy, mostly Yup. And just to start, the main selling point of Zod is the TypeScript first um, schema declaration feature. So moving forward, um, when I say validation, just to kind of go over what validation is so we're on the same page, um, when I say validation, that's just the ways for us to um, verify that the data that the user is sending us is valid or it's in the required shape or form that we want it in. So here we have a simple snippet of how we're validating um, a user schema where it takes an email address and an email address and a password. Um, to the right, we have a simple example of how Zod does it. And to the left, we have a simple example of how Yup does it. Yup looks a little prettier in terms of how it's formatted, but they're essentially doing the same thing. Um, they're asking for an email field and they're validating with the validators. You have these chain methods that ensure that the email is of, um, is a valid, a valid email and password. You have um, these um, chaining functions on your string primitive to ensure that the password is of minimum six characters. So to simplify, validation is just a way to ensure that the data is of the requirements that we want. And Zod and Yup can achieve this um, at the ground. But just to kind of take things a bit further, I'll just show you the differences or what sets Zod apart or what how Zod is different from other validation libraries such as Yup. So moving forward, um, so going to further uh, well, what makes Zod different, uh, by default, Zod, uh, Zod validation schema, all parameters are required by default. So unlike Yup, um, where you have to specify which parameters are required, Zod kind of takes a type screw approach where you have a type and by default, all of the parameters specified in your type are required. So Zod kind of follows the same paradigm. and you are able to specify if something is optional. So you can specify on a primitive or, to, or a field on your parameter that is optional by doing the dot optional on chain function. Here we have an example of it being done here on this optional gender validation schema. So for this schema, um, gender would be optional. So when the user, if a user doesn't uh, enter gender, it would be optional here. Um, also to note, how Zod is different from um, Yup our other validation library is Zod parses instead of validating. And what that means is that Zod essentially takes the data and tries parse it and tries to return it. And if Zod encounters an error, it will essentially throw a runtime error, um, essentially stopping the program at runtime. Um, you can get around this by um, wrapping your validation logic in a try catch, or you can use the optional functions like parse safe for parsing, for doing like safe parses, where it will, it will do the same as Yup, where Yup returns the error instead of throwing um, a runtime error. So 
with the up, the user has to handle the error because real returns it instead of throwing an error. Um, and that's just how Zod does things differently when it comes to validating. And just to kind of go over some of the highlights of this example here to the right, um, I spoke earlier that Zod essentially gives us a way to build on top of our validation schema. So essentially, you can take a previous validation schema and build on top of it. Um, this is one thing that set Zod, Zod apart. So here I have a Zod user schema. And for this user schema, um, I can take that user schema and extend on it to essentially override or add additional fields to create a new validation logic. So this optional gender validation schema um, has all of the requirements as specified on the Zod user schema, but it overrides the gender parameter to make it now optional. If you were trying to do this with Yup, you would have to essentially create a new validation on schema with all the previous parameters and then specify um, the changes. Whereas with Zod, you can just build on top of your existing schemas. And moving on, to just kind of speak um, further into the intricacies of how Zod works and how Zod does things. Um, for Zod, um, when Zod parses an object, it strips out, by default, it strips out any unwanted or unvalidated character, unvalidated fields. So anything is not validating against, Zod essentially strips it out and moves it. So you get your clean sanitized data. So everything that Zod returns to you is sanitized and has been validate, validated. Um, so that's a default behavior. Optionally, you can um, use the pass through function on your Zod schema, Zod validation schema. So that what that allows is for any unwanted or unvalidated data to pass through and return to the user. But just know that that's not that wasn't validated by Yum. So any additional fields that you're sending to the user wouldn't be validated then and there. Um, and then finally, if you want to be strict on the user to say, hey, only send us this, you can use the optional strict um, function on your Zod validation schema. So essentially, it will throw a same runtime error if the user sends additional fields that Zod isn't validating against. So Zod kind of gives us um, ways to uh, validate against things that it doesn't want to validate against, essentially. Um, and yeah, so moving on to something else that Zod provides um, and how Zod kind of becomes like that TAD script first um, library. So unlike other libraries, Zod supports TypeScript union and intersection. And when I say support, it's, it's essentially just mimics TypeScript union and intersection. So for Zod union, this essentially creates a logical or between our validations. So you can have two validation, validation schemas and create a logical or with them. So that essentially gives you a new validation schema that um, validates against two of your previous um, validation schemas. So if you look to the right here, we have a Zod user schema and a Zod place schema. Then we create a person or place validation schema using the Zod union schema. So we're essentially validating against this. Um, so you can start, start to see how it essentially becomes like TypeScript where you have your TypeScript unions and you can have an OR type where your type can be either this or that. Um, so it gives you that um, runtime validation as well with your TypeScript validation. Um, and so for Zod intersection, it's essentially the same as a TypeScript intersection. That's essentially merging of two types and creating a logical and. So um, an example of this is on the next slide, but essentially you're merging two validations, validation logic to become one big validation logic. And as I said earlier, this is what Zod, this is one of Zod's selling points, is, and this is the goal of Zod, is essentially to make your validation logic become your, your complex types. And we'll see an example of that um, later in, in the presentation. So um, this is this example of a uh, simple intersection being done in Zod. So we, here we have a Zod user schema that has a simple user object, and then we have a Zod error handling schema that takes um, error handling parameters such as a success or an error. Um, you can create a Zod user response schema through an intersection, and this essentially merges those two previous validation schemas and validates against that. So if we have this, if we're validating this object here that has all the required parameters, um, it wouldn't throw an error because we we have our we have two basic building blocks of um, the object that we're validating against. And as I said, just to kind of 
um, reiterate, this is what Zod selling point is, just to kind of build on these atomic validation logics and those become your types. And finally, just to, well not finally, just to add more to its TypeScript first, TypeScript first class, TypeScript first support, essentially, just like TypeScript, Zod provides you with um, the utility functions such as pick, omit, and partial. And if you're familiar with TypeScript, um, that's essentially a way to pick out um, specific parameters from your validation and create new validation logic. Um, um, I'm hoping you're kind of seeing the theme here, Zod, and essentially with Zod, you can, from existing validation schemas, you can create new validation schemas. And from those new validation schemas, you can create more validation schemas. So with PIC, um, we have our existing user scheme up here, but we can pick out specific parameters. And for, if I had um, chain, if I had chain functions on this like dot email to validate that it's a valid email or um, minimum on this name string, those validation properties would come across. So any kind of validation properties would carry across to this um, other schema that where you're just picking out certain validation logic from previous. Um, your validation schemas. And for omit, it works the same way as the TypeScript utility function. Where it does is it takes an existing validation schema and removes the fields that you're trying to omit. And you're, you have the same validation logic as before. And then partial, um, as we stated earlier, everything in Zod is required by default, such as a, um, similar to a TypeScript type. So with Zod partial, what you're able to do is essentially tell Zod or create a new schema, a validation schema that essentially makes all of the parameters optional. And lastly, I just want to kind of highlight um, how Zod becomes a supports TypeScript out of the box by default, and it supports it as closer than Yup and other libraries, validation libraries. So by default, out of the box, Zod gives you all of um, your TypeScript static inferencing. So all of your default types that TypeScript support, um, you get that out of the box from Zod. So you get all of your TypeScript linting when you create your type from your Zod validation schema. So I've been saying Zod support TypeScript, but so far, only thing I've been showing you guys is just validation schemas that's used to essentially parse user input. So what, how do you get your type? Um, so from your validation schema, you're, you're able to infer your type from Zod, from that validation schema. So here we have uh, the same user schema that I've been using with name, email, age, gender, and type. Um, so you're able to create a user type that takes all of these parameters and you're able to create your object against that. And you have your um, you have your linting as before. So one thing to note is if I were to uncomment type and comment out type paid, we see type paid, type here is an enum that only supports these two fields, um, which is paid and free. If we were to use type undefined, that would kind of give you a warning that say, hey, that's not a that's not a supported field in the enum or supported type for the enum. And Zod gives us that by default out of the box. So just to show you how it's different from Yup, with Yup, there's no way out of the box to get enums. Um, you have to use one of its array functions, which is Yup that mix, and then say um, one up. So this type here is not an enum. It's an array that essentially it's an object that um, is that allows paid and free as one of the properties. So with this, you you don't get the same um, linting or validation that you get with Zod or TypeScript validation that you get with Zod. Um, so here, if I were to uncomment out, if I were to comment free and uncomment undefined, um, this wouldn't throw any error. Um, in your LinkedIn, because there's no way, as it stands right now, um, there's no, it isn't aware of enum. Yup, isn't, Yup doesn't know what an enum is by default. You're able to get some validations against um, specific characters or specific fields, uh, but you don't get the same 
level of linking and validation or type awareness that Zod provides out of the box. And I think this is, as I said, one of the other main selling points of Zod essentially. It becomes, it's one-to-one -one with TypeScript out of the box. So if you're heavily using TypeScript, um, Zod essentially makes everything seamless and you wouldn't have to worry about your types, your validation logics not supporting certain types when it comes to Zod. And uh, yeah, that essentially is a wrap. Um, and just to kind of wrap up everything, just to kind of go ho over the benefits of Zod, Zod versus Yup, essentially they do the same thing if when it comes to validation. So if you're validating simple forms and you're not you're not using TypeScript, I'd say Yup or Zod is a good um, good choice. Um, Yup is more um, has been our own longer, so it's more tried and true. But if you're a library that if you're using TypeScript, I would recommend Zod because it supports more it's more closely support or it's more supported with TypeScript out of the box. Um, and yeah, so TypeScript goes on and that's it. And thanks again for your time, everybody.